What is going on YouTube world? Today I'm coming to you with a video about indoor bike trainers. Now, for those of you that live in the Midwest or in the northern states where we get a lot of cold weather and a lot of snow, it's really hard even in fat bike season sometimes to get out and ride your bike. Right now it's like 7 degrees outside and 25 miles an hour wind, so I don't think there's any amount of uh, bundling up that I could do that would really get me out there to ride. So I'm going to set up a budget bike trainer, I'm actually going to put my mountain bike on it, and we're going to see how it does. Let's have a look at the trainer. Now before we do that, one of the things I want to mention is the rear tire on your bike. Now if it is a knobby tire, like a mountain bike style, really grippy tire, um, I use WTBs and Kendas on mine, they are way too aggressive and they are going to be insanely loud and really difficult to use on one of these. So I actually went with a hybrid cruiser style tire. Now, as far as the trainer, the one I picked up is a Conquer 530 trainer. It's a magnetic style trainer. Uh, it's got an adjustable uh, magnet on it so you can adjust it in and out for different tire sizes. And it comes with a quick release skewer as well as a front wheel block that'll just hold your bike level while you're riding it. Now, I picked it up for $72 on Amazon. I've seen it other places as well. Uh, I think Dick Sporting Goods carries it. Coles and a couple other places, all kind of right in that same price range. Um, but for $72, I'm actually pretty happy with it. So here it is, and it collapses down nice and flat so it doesn't take up a ton of space. When you're ready to use it, it just pops out like that. Um, and then the motor itself, or the magnet, or whatever you want to call it, just kind of flips back and sits on this adjustment screw. So that's kind of how it'll look when it's set up. Now, as far as putting your bike in it, it's got these two cups and they're on adjustable screws. And basically what you do is you either take that quick release that they provided, or if you have a bike that's just got standard axles with nuts on it, those fit in this as well. Um, and you basically just center those in between these cups and you run these down. And once you've got those run down and tight, your wheel is centered on the magnet, you should be good to go. So it's a really easy setup, should only take a minute or two. Okay, so to swap out your quick release, it's super simple. One thing you need to note is that you will need some grease uh, before you go back together because the new one comes completely clean and dry. So, let's get going. So to take it out, you're just gonna pop your quick release here. There'll be a nut on the other side. And you're just gonna spin it until that nut, it's like a little cap, pops off and there's a little spring. So you see this tiny spring that fits inside that. Once you've got it loose, you just pull it right on out. Now for your new one, you're just going to want to take that same nut off the other end. So once you've got the nut off of the end, oh, this one also has a little springs, so make sure you pull just one of the springs out, and the skinny side always fits towards the uh, inside of the frame. So what you're going to do is just take a dab of grease, nothing crazy, not a ton, just enough to get this thing well lubricated because it doesn't uh, it, it actually spins freely inside of the hub uh, so you want to make sure there's minimal friction so I just kinda smear it on there real good don't have to be too precise and then you're gonna take it you're gonna run it through the axle and I just kinda work it side to side once it gets in there a bit just to get that grease spread out Then you're going to take your spring with the skinny side towards the inside. And then you're going to install your nut. And you tighten it down just like you would your normal uh, QR whenever you're installing or removing a wheel. Let's have a quick look at how easy this thing is to get into the trainer. And I think you'll be impressed at how simple it is. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your bike. And you're going to center it between those two cups. The adjustable cups right here and right here. And for mine, they have to be run all the way out because my, uh, my dropouts are actually pretty wide. And what you're going to do is you're just going to lift up on the bike. And you're going to pop one side in to a cup. 
and start centering it up. And what you want to do is make sure that the wheel is centered on the magnet here. Once you've got that one adjusted in a little bit, you can start adjusting the other side. And basically you'll just work back and forth to make sure that it stays centered. Now once you've got it in the right place and you've got some good tension on it, it should hold very sturdy. And then you're just gonna take these inside uh, wing nut type deals and just thread them down against the trainer. And what that'll do is that's gonna lock the rod in place. Once you've got the bike mounted into the frame of the trainer, all you need to do is adjust your magnet so that it makes contact with the wheel. And all you do is you twist this little uh, screw right here, little hand screw. You're just gonna run it up until it makes contact and you got a little bit of resistance. Whew. So I think one of the best things about this trainer is the fact that not only is it going to help me maintain that endurance and stamina that I've built up over the past season, but it actually lets me hang out right here in front of my TV and watch my favorite YouTubers on the big screen. <laughs> Next nice. drop off is the same thing. Pop right up. Oh, into the dirt. Oh, now I need a jump trainer so I can be as good as Josh. Here are my initial thoughts on this particular trainer. I've had it for about two weeks. I've put in several rides um, and I've kind of got a feel for how it performs. Now, if you are looking for a high end trainer where you can hammer and you can, uh, you know, specify exactly where you're going to tone your muscles at what speed, at what range, this is probably not the one. Um, if you're just looking to get something to kind of help maintain what you've built up over the previous season, uh, until your next riding season occurs, this one's probably going to do the job. If someone were to ask me, is this a good trainer? I would say it is a good enough trainer. Uh, not great, not terrible. Um, I'm going to continue to use it. The nice thing is, is it's not super loud. My bike fit into it really well. I can ride it and still comfortably watch my TV without headphones or anything else. Um, and I get a good workout on it. So, you know, I'm happy enough with it. Real quick, you guys, I've got to give a shout out and an extra special thanks to Josh from Daily Mountain Bike Rider for letting me feature his clips in my video. If you're not familiar with his channel, it's Daily MTB Rider, and he has some awesome videos. You should totally go and check it out. My name's Gavin, and that's all for this video. If you liked what you saw, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up, and go ahead and subscribe, because I'm going to continue to come to you with additional videos from here on out.